All right, in this video, we're going to run through a couple of quick examples. Uh, we've got the easy way, and again, we've got the easy way. So we want to find the inverse. So as we were talking about this in the last video, uh, using the algebra that says that you rewrite f of x as y because those guys are exactly the same, right? And once we get here, we kind of start talking about the inverse and how x becomes y and y becomes x. So we now rewrite this to say x equals 10 times y minus 9 over 17. Again, it's just y becomes x, x becomes y. No big deal. And then from here, we solve this equation for y. All right. Well, the first big hurdle we have to get over is the 17. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation times 17. Multiply u times 17. All right, so we have 17x is equal to 10y minus 9. The next thing you would do to get y by itself is add 9 on both sides. All right, so 17x plus 9 equals 10y. And to finish getting y by itself, we divide both sides by 10. And we've already kind of seen how I like to go ahead and write y on the left side. So y is equal to 17x plus 9, all divided by 10. All right. But remember how we said that we don't leave it like this. We're going to rewrite this so that y is using the inverse function notation. So f inverse of x is equal to 17x plus 9 all over 10. Okay? Now, let's see what happens if we do this the easy way. Again, if you can follow what I'm doing with the order of operations, great. If you're struggling with that, then just do it the algebra way that we have here on the left. So notice the order of operations here when you start to plug things into this function. The first thing you do, whoops, here we go. The first thing you do is that you are multiplying times 10. After you multiply times 10, you subtract 9. After you subtract 9, you then divide that result by 17. That's what the order of operations states whenever you plug a number into this function. The inverse is going to do all of these guys in a backwards order with the inverse operation of each. So you start with x, and what do we do? Well, the inverse of dividing by 17 is to multiply times 17. Then what? Well, the opposite of subtracting 9 is adding 9. The last hurdle, the inverse of multiplying times 10, is to divide by 10. Now notice these steps that I have written here in pink. We said we need to multiply times 17 first, then we need to add 9, and then we need to divide by 10. And those are the same steps that I wrote in pink here as I was solving this equation for y. And you can see that direct relationship between the two. So my inverse function, look what you're doing with x. x times 17, so you start with 17x. You add 9 to that expression, and then you divide by 10. Now when you divide by 10, you're dividing everything that came before it by 10, like that. So these guys are exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which method you use, you're going to be fine. And again, let me caution you. You can't always do the shortcut method. We're going to see an example of that in the next video. But before we get there, let's do another one. Let's see if we can apply what I say is that easy method. All right, so if we are given f of x is equal to 5 times 2x minus 3 quantity to the third minus 7, Let's find 
its inverse. Find the inverse. All right. Now I'm going to do the order of operations trick. I'm going to do it, you know, write it the correct way and then do it backwards. Okay. Now I don't think I have enough room to go vertically, so I'm going to go horizontally for this. But it doesn't really matter. It's just about how you organize. All right. So the first thing that happens to x is not the five. It's not the three or the cube or the seven. What's directly connected to the x is the two. So the first thing you would do is to multiply times two. After you multiply times two, and again, imagine that you're just plugging a number in. If I were to plug in, say six, it doesn't really matter what number you plug in, but plug in six, right? You would do two times six first, right? You wouldn't subtract three, you wouldn't cube things. You would do two times six to get 12. And then after you got 12, you would subtract the three. That's the very next thing that you would do. I would subtract three. And once you have 12 minus three, do you deal with the five or the cube next? Well, we know the order of operations would say that powers take precedence over multiplication. So we would then have to raise that number to the third power. Then the coefficient of five comes into play, so that's times five. And then once you get all of that calculated, you would then subtract seven. That's what the order of operations would state for any number that you plug in. And again, don't be confused, like, where'd you get the six? I made it up. Because I wanted to see if I plug in a number, do I know the order of operations and can I follow them to know what to do when I plug in? Because if I know the order of operations for just plugging in any random number, I can write out those steps, which means I can then go backwards, right? So if I start with x over here, and let's go backwards, let's take each of these steps in a backwards order and do the inverse operation for each one. So the inverse of minus 7 is plus 7. The inverse of times 5 is to divide by 5. Then the inverse of cubing something is to take the cube root, like that. Then what? Well, the inverse of minus 3 is plus 3. And the inverse of times 2 is to divide by 2. That's what the backward steps for the order of operations would say. So let's write this in our inverse function notation. So f inverse is equal to, let's see, where do we start? We start with x plus 7. Okay, so x plus 7. All right, divide by 5. So divide this whole guy by 5. And then it says, do the cube root of all that. So all of this, all of that, including the 5, the fraction, everything, is inside the cube root. Then we have to add 3. So I'm adding 3 to that cube root. And then I'm dividing this whole guy by 2. It's kind of a crazy expression, but that's what the inverse looks like. No one ever said inverses were going to be nice, pretty things. Okay, Sometimes they do get a little bit messy. Now, we could take this and we could try to do some simplifying here, but for me, like this is good enough. You don't need to go extra, right? Just like up here, you really should not, would not have tried to cube 2x minus 3. It's going to be gross, it's going to be unnecessary, and it just makes things more difficult for finding the inverse. Now again, if you don't like what I'm doing here, you can do the traditional algebraic way where we rewrite this as y, and then you swap the x's and the y's, and you solve for y. And you'll see that when you solve for y, the first step that you would do would be to add 7. After that, you would divide by 5, then take the cube root of both sides, then you would add 3 and divide by 2. And you'll get the same answer that I have here. Now this trick is great, but what you're going to see in the next problem is that we can't use this trick all the time. So let's see what that's going to look like.